y'all it's heel heat time hi everybody and welcome to heel heat my name is george coles and this is an episode of george versus now it's been a little while since i've done one of these so i'm going to refresh you on what the concept is basically i take a topic that i'm on the other side of the angle on and give you my point of view this time we're going to talk about Jim Cornette and his view of the wrestling world. Now, we've all heard Jim. He's an absolute legend in the business. He's one of the great managers of all time. Uh, historic runs with the Midnight Express. Just a Yokozuna and others. Just a, a fantastic wrestler. One of the smartest guys in the history of pro wrestling. This is all not in doubt. And also, makes a very interesting podcast, makes very interesting interviews. He's a guy that's interesting. However, I'm going to show you and point out some things where Jim is a hypocrite. Jim's point of views potentially are wrong. And Jim is just saying things to say, stay relevant, in my opinion. First off, let's talk about some of the things that Jim Jim has rallied against. Guys like Colt Cabana, Joey Ryan, Pro Wrestling Gorilla as a whole, um, Kenny Omega's matches against a blow-up doll and against a little girl. And let's let's break this down. So basically, Jim thinks that there's, you know. Pro wrestling should be taken as a serious sport. Well, Jim, where were these views back in the 90s when you brought a man to the ring that was a wrestling centaur, I guess? I don't know what you would call it. He was half man, half bull in Mantar. Do you remember that one, Jim? You were his manager. You walked to the ring where, while he had a bull head or Boarhead, or whatever the hell that was supposed to be, over top of him. He was half man, half beast. That's how they played it, Jim. Do you remember that? Do you not remember yourself being involved? How is that less silly than Jim, than let's say Joey Ryan's U porn plex? Or the grenade spot that you, you talked about with Chuck Taylor? Or anything that Cole Cabana has done? If that's just a one-off, you say that might be the kind of argument, okay, that he even, he was just getting, doing what he was paid for. Fair enough. I understand. We've all done stuff that when, when paid by our employers wasn't necessarily what we wanted to do. Let's go to Smoky Mountain Wrestling now, where you're the booker, Jim. We have Jim Cornette wrestling a match against one of his creations, Cowabunga. The Wrestling Ninja Turtle. Now, I might be wrong, but Smoky Mountain, you were the booker, right? You were the one that came up with the gimmicks? How is Cowabunga any better than wrestling an eight-year-old girl or nine-year-old girl or wrestling a blow-up doll? That's okay. He made a mistake, you had a one-off then. Sure, sure. What about per Prince Karras, the wrestling mummy? Did you forget about him? And I've heard your story, Jim, and I heard that you say that Rick Rubin, who was a backer of Smoky Mountain, wanted a wrestling mummy. But you could have easily said, look, I'm not going to do this. This is against what I believe in. Because I would tend to think that Prince Karras, the wrestling mummy, Unabom, some of the other silly gimmicks you had there, Cowabunga and Smoky Mountain, would fit in the same vein, although not as successful, as a guy like Cole Cabana, 
as a guy like Joey Ryan, who Joey Ryan is a master of using social media to pr press his career along. Something that I think we're going to talk about in a little bit with you, Jim. Something that I believe that you yourself do as well. But going from that, going from his stance against comedy matches, we also have his his views on anti intergender wrestling, another thing that he does dislikes Joey Ryan for. He dislikes the intergender matches. That's fine. A lot of people don't. Some people have a problem with man on woman violence, and I can understand that point of view. I really do. I myself have no problem with it. I understand in the context of pro wrestling that it's not necessarily the same as a man beating up a woman. It's not the same as domestic violence. However, I could see where some people wouldn't, that would be their cup of tea, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. But don't go on, on record saying that you're against an, intergender matches, when if you look up your, your wrestling history, Jim, and you haven't wrestled many matches, but at least on a few occasions, you've wrestled the likes of Baby Doll and Precious who, if I remember correctly, and I might be wrong, both are women. Kind of... Kind of hard to be against intergender wrestling when you've been paid to do intergender wrestling matches. Now, I, I hear what you're going to say. I know what the back is going to be on this, the, the anti to my argument, that you're a manager, you're not a wrestler. Well, your main problem, Jim, is that you were, neither was Precious or Baby Doll, they were valets, which would be the equivalent of a manager, which would put someone like, let's say, Candice LeRae versus the Young Bucks, or Candice versus any number of the men she's wrestled. Um, and I'm not only saying that Candice is the only one, I'm just, she's the first that came to my mind. That would make them on evil footing, wouldn't it? Wouldn't a woman's wrestler and a male wrestler be on similar and equal footing as a, a valet and manager? It's the same job, right? It would be like me going into my job and having a, a woman that does the same job I do. We're both competing for the same raise, aren't we? Or the same promotion. Just a little food for thought when you think, when you listen to Jim and how he talks about intergender matches and how he's so vehemently against the the, the concept. But we'll move on from that. Other things that we see that Jim, Jim Cornette likes to spew out and likes to put out there, however, he's a hypocrite about. Another one is the countless number of shoot interviews you've done. I own, I think, four or five of them myself. Three that you did with a Bobby the Brain Heenan, one you did with Bill Watts, and I think there's another one, but I can't... Oh, yeah, with you and the Midnight Express that I own personally. I've also watched several others that you've done, your own shoot interviews, or where it was just you. You've done no, more of them. you probably done more shoot interviews than any wrestler out there. Maybe Iron Sheik is up there with you. I think you have him beat, though, but the sheer volume of shoot interviews that you've done, and I'm going somewhere with this, giving out inside business information is kind of what you rally against saying guys are killing the business by, by going on Twitter being friends or saying who's this and who did that. It's the same exact thing you're doing, Jim. Matter of fact, I've heard you say personally, because I do listen to your podcast, and like I said in the beginning, I do find you very entertaining. But I do take a lot of what you say with a grain of salt. You've said on your podcast at least a few times, and I don't, I'm not going to say an exact quote because I can't remember the exact words you said, that if you're not the innovator of the shoot interview, you're one of the first few that do I remember very early on there was a Eddie Gilbert one. I think Brody did a, a semi-shooting, what would be a template for a shoot interview on a 
on a news special that was basically a 30 minute interview. But early on you were doing conventions where you would do basically the shoot format, talk about stuff that happened behind the scenes. Well, fans do want to see this, and there is a market for that. I quite enjoy them. I watch a lot of the shoot interviews. Um, I think they're enjoyable, personally. I like to know more about why something happened, or someone's view on why something happened, or why so-and-so was pushed and so-and-so wasn't. That intrigues me, but I, I'm a wrestling fan. I, I, every, I want to know everything I can about the sport. You, you do all these while criticizing other people for killing the business. You criticize guys like Vince Russo, and we're going to get into him more later. Guys like Vince McMahon. You criticize Vince McMahon for letting the cat out of the bag on kayfabe. But you do the same thing. You criticize Russo for all his silly booking ideas, and trust me, this isn't a defense of Russo here. Uh, but how is anything he did killing the wrestling business more than telling the inside workings of it? And part of that, part of stuff that you've done, you've released what people's paydays were. You have went back and said, so-and-so got this. Even in your Midnight Express scrapbook, you talk about paydays. You sold on your website at one point checks that you gave out to wrestlers. And I'm, I'm not sure if they're still there. They may be. Go check his website. I haven't, I didn't check the scene before I did this. But at one point, he was selling these. Do you know how I know? I bought one for one of my friends. I bought a check that you gave out to, uh, to Robert, I believe it was one of the Midnight, or one of the Rock and Roll Express. It might have been Ricky or Rob, but I don't remember who it was a few years back. <clears throat> but I have a really good friend that's a huge Rock and Roll Express fan. So, as a birthday gift, I thought, wow, this is cool. It's got Jim Cornette's signature on it. I believe it was Robert. It got Robert Gibson's signature on it. No, it was Ricky. It was Ricky Morton. You got Ricky Morton's signature on it. It says Richard Morton. That's why I remember because Robert Gibson's real name is something different, which I'm not going to say here, but you would. Um, and it said R Richard Morton. I thought it was cool. It had both their signatures on it. I took it, and I took a picture of the Midnight Express and made a cool little frame around it, gave it to my friend as a gift. She thoroughly enjoyed it. She loved it. That's... And... Again, you're welcome to my friend Laura, who I gave it to. If you're watching this, you know I'm talking about you. But anyway, I digress. You're releasing what guys were paid. I don't know that they necessarily want that out there. Especially some of the guys that may have skirted the IRS. Just saying. I think that's a little bit... That's giving away some of the stuff that you say that Vince did. Vince killing K Fave or killing the territories. What is that? What is that is breaking K Fave as well. And the last thing I want to talk about is your never ending feud with Vince Russo. I don't believe it. Not anymore. I do believe at some point you may have been mad at Vince Russo. I do believe at some point there may have been an issue between you and Vince Russo. But that, we're going on 20 years plus now, Jim. Unless he did something egregious to you personally, I don't see anybody really holding grudges, grudges that long. And I know there's been back and forth between you two. You're both adults, so. I think that you, and this is just a personal belief, I think that you and Vince go back and forth to keep you both relevant. If you say something bad about Russo, of course it gets on all the wrestling dirt sheets that people look up the Jim Cornette podcast, people look up and see when Jim's going to be in town, people look up the Russo podcast, look to see what he's doing. I think at this point the feud is more mutually beneficial to you than an actual anger. I think your anger with Vince Russo, and you might, you might hate him, you might dislike him, 
he might be someone that you never care to be in a room with. And that's fine. I understand that. There's people I dislike. There's people that I don't ever want to be in a room with. However, the people I felt that way about 20 years ago, and I'm an old enough person that I'm, I'm now 40, that 20 years ago I was in my late teens, early 20s, the people I hated then, while some of them I may not care to see ever again, I still don't hold those grudges against them, no matter what they did back then. I really don't. They're not in my mind anymore. I don't even think about them. Now I know it gets brought up to you and how do you feel about him and you say your opinion, but a lot of times you just come right out with it and say you hate Vince Russo for this, this, or the other. Which is great. Whatever. I just think it's manufactured. I think a lot of what you have problems with is hypocrisies that you had no problem with doing in your own career. And I think your beef with Vince Russo is a manufactured beef to keep yourself relevant. And that's not... I have no problem with that, Jim, because you know what? You do have a great podcast. It is very interesting. I don't agree with everything you say. Some of the stuff he says does set me off, as you can see here. I do have an honest problem with you being hypocritical about things. If you're going to say I'm against comedy and silly gimmicks, I want you to put out there that, hey, at one point I did book a guy named Prince Karras a wrestling mummy. I did book a wrestler in a Ninja co Turtle costume named Cowabunga and even wrestled against him. When I was in WWE, I wrestled, I re I'm sorry, not wrestled, but managed Mantar. I want you to put that out there, Jim. When you're giving these opinions, add that disclaimer in. It would be like me, say, for instance, having a speeding ticket and going, I'm against anybody that speeds. People that speed are reckless drivers. Full disclosure, I have three speeding tickets myself. See? See how you do that? You know, you can be against the subject, but let the fan educate those fans that don't know that. There's fans that don't remember Mantar. There's fans that never seen Smoky Mountain. I mean, there's only a hardcore pocket of fans, and so most of them have just seen what's on the WWE Network. Even when Smoky Mountain was at its peak, there was a limited fan base that was watching that. And I'm not dis disrespecting Smoky Mountain. I like Smoky Mountain. I'm just saying we're not talking about something on the level of WCW or WWE or even ECW or even global wrestling, one of the smaller national companies. We're talking about a regional promotion that very few, few people seen and only really hardcore wrestling fans that were outside of the region seen. So a lot of those people have no idea that Cowabunga or Prince Karras even existed. Why? Yeah, I would respect your opinion much, much more if you told me I am against this here and I made the mistake in my career when I promoted Cowabunga or I promoted Prince Karras. Or this, that, or the other. And basically that's my whole point of this video. The hypocrisies that you put out there, you don't put yourself in check for. That's why I'm here. I'm going to put you in check and say, hey, love what you do, Jim, but let's tell the people these are my hypocrisies as well. You can't throw a rock at someone and not expect rocks to come back. Basically that's all I got that's all I'm saying, Jim. Hopefully I know you probably won't watch this. I know you probably won't ever get wind of this. You might get a viewer or two or a listener or two, I mean, that has watched this video and they might shoot you an email and say, hey there's this guy out there, George Coles, that's calling you a hypocrite. And maybe you'll get a bug up your butt and watch it. I'd love to hear I'd love to hear that you watch this. That would be awesome. 
I doubt you're going to. But to the fans that do watch my my videos and do listen to your podcast and do consider you an intelligent and thoughtful proponent of the sport that we love, I'm just giving a counterpoint. And I hope they take what I say along with what you say and realize there's always two, maybe even three sides to every story. But basically, that's all I have to say on this topic. My name is George Coles, and this has been an episode of George Versus.